Family, what is good, man? You already know how we coming. We are back with another video, okay? And listen, listen, family. I'm gonna need you guys to cut me some slack, all right? I know I was a couple days late on this video, but uh, man, I've been busy, all right? As you guys know, I moved into my new studio. It has officially been two weeks as of this past Saturday. And um, I kind of wanted to hop on here and let you guys know how that's going. All right, so uh, it's actually super cool to be on my own again. It's kind of like being in the basement, just like on a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? But I'm able to provide my clients with an experience that feels more exclusive, right? I can cater the music as to who is in my chair at the moment because I go by appointments. So I know exactly who I'm going to be cutting and what kind of, you know, music they prefer. And it just feels like a lot more of an exclusive experience that I can't charge more for, right? Like every haircut comes with a shampoo. I'm offering ser offering services like facials and, you know, stuff like that. So it's cool to be on my own again. And yeah, my clients so far have loved it. It has been a really dope experience. But I wanted to hop on here and let you guys know how that's going. So today is actually the first tutorial. This is it right here. I just finished editing it. This is this video. Um... This tutorial was the first one that I recorded in my new studio and family. I feel like the lighting takes the quality of the video to a whole nother level. So when you watch this, let me know down in the comments if you think the same, alright? And for missing uh, or being late on this video for two days, I'm going to be dropping two videos this week. So be on the lookout for that, alright? So family, thank you for clicking on this video. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's get it. YouTube, you already know I'll be coming. Today we're going to be doing a mid fade with a slight trim on top. And with this mid fade, it is going to drop slightly towards the back. So I went ahead and started with my first bald line. And I started in the back of the head. Reason being is because I do want this to drop towards the back. And I want to ensure that I don't take the guideline too high. So I started in the back, went to the side of the head, and then I'm gonna go ahead and connect it in the middle. And that's how we're going to get that nice drop in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side. And also what starting off the guideline in the back of the head helps you to do is ensure that both sides of the guideline are even and that one side isn't set higher than the other. And you can see as we set that guideline how it just kind of fits his head a little bit better. And now we're just going to go ahead and bought everything under that bought, uh, that line out you want to let the trimmer do the work you don't want to just press against their head super hard so we're causing irritation and their skin to you know get really red so we're letting the trimmer do the work and just botting them out And now we're just gonna go ahead and follow that up with our shaver. Mine's is a gold babyless shaver. And what this is gonna do is get it a lot closer to the skin and it's gonna allow the haircut to last a couple days longer. And as well, it's gonna make that, that fade pop a little bit more just because it adds another la layer of fade or a layer of gradients to the haircut. So we're gonna go ahead and set in our first uh, guideline with our clipper all the way open as I just showed you. And here we're going up about a half an inch to a full inch. And I would say this is closer to a full inch. And we're going to follow the same exact shape as we made with our broad line, where we drop it towards the back. And you'll see me go over the guideline multiple times just to ensure that it is a true clipper open, right? Make sure that the guideline is nice and clean because this is the foundation to the fade. And now right above that, we're gonna go with our one guard all the way open, keeping the same exact shape and going up the same width. So I'm going ahead and combing the hair as we fade and set in our guard lines. And this is our one guard all the way open, going up about a full inch, and then keeping that same shape. And don't be scared to cut hair, right? Because I feel like a lot of times when we do start cutting, uh, what stops us from getting that fade real nice and gradient and stretched out is because we're scared to cut too much hair off, right? And I just want to build and instill confidence in you to just 
take off as much hair as you need. You know what I mean? Don't make the guidelines so little to the point where it doesn't even look like a blend. It just looks like a bow cut, right? You want to be able to have that nice gradient blend. And now right above that one guard open, we're going to go with our two guard all the way open. And with this, it's not really a guideline. What we're doing here is trying to blend into the top as best as possible. So you'll see me kind of exagger exaggerate that flick out motion when I get towards the t uh, length on top of his head. So again, this is our two guard all the way open. And you will notice that I am fading a little bit different than my other videos. I'm setting all my guidelines in first and then we're gonna blend downwards. And now since that two guard open didn't blend into the top very well, we're gonna start with our three guard all the way open. And again, we're gonna flick out going straight up. We're not digging into the hair. We're kind of just going straight up off the ridge of his head and trying to blend into the length on top as best as possible. And then at the end of the fade, we're gonna go and follow it up with thinning shears just so we can soften that blend up. But you can see how it already blended into the top pretty well. Again, this is our three guard all the way open. And right where we left off with that three guard to kind of blend again better into the top, we're gonna go with our clipper over comb. So I'm going in with the comb and flaring out slightly and any uh, hair sticking out of the comb, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of with my clipper. And my clipper is all the way open here and I'm just going in with the comb, flaring out and just taking off any hair sticking out of the comb. And now right under that, we're gonna go with our one and a half all the way open and then we'll close it gradually as needed as I just showed you. So I'm going ahead combing the hair in place and then we're gonna go ahead and start fading. So I'm going in with my one and a half all the way open, trying to stay as you know consistent as possible with my strokes. And you'll see me go and open and close the lever as needed. And as we do that, that line starts to get blended out. But you wanna stay patient, right? Because majority of the time, it doesn't come out the first time and, you're ha and you'll have to go over it again, right? It's all about just staying patient and trusting the process. And now right under that, we're gonna go with our half guard all the way open. And again, we're gonna close it gradually as needed. So we're gonna go in with our clipper all the way open. Just a flicking at that line, trying to get it blended out as possible. And the open wasn't doing the job, so I went ahead and closed my lever uh, all the way. And as we do that, that line starts to slur slowly but surely come out. And you wanna make sure you're continually brushing the hair as you fade, just so it's laying in its natural position. And you can see as we blend down, this fade really starts to come together. So I'm trying to get through my steps, not super fast, but as fast as I can. So that way, once I get through my steps, it's just a matter of detailing and kind of taking that haircut to the next level, you feel me? And now before we move on to getting rid of that last line, there is some uh, detail work that we need to do above that, that clipper open, or that, or that half guard, sorry. And so I grab my one guard all the way open once again, and I'm just attacking those dark spots, using a lot of the corner of the blade to get rid of those dark spots, right? And that's gonna help you get into those dark crevices that you couldn't get with that one and a half before. So I went ahead and closed my lever. And I'm just starting off longer and closing as needed until it's blended out, right? Because you can always take off hair, but you can't put hair back on. So you wanna be as cautious as possible. And now I went ahead and grabbed my one and a half and just kind of detailing, trying to get that blend as best as possible before we get rid of that last line. And you can see already with that detail work, it looks a lot more fluid, a lot more consistent. Again, grab my one, one guard all the way open using the corner of the blade. And you can see it starts to come together above that last line. And again, I grab my two guard all the way open and I'm just attacking any imperfections that I didn't get the first time, right? Staying patient, staying consistent, trusting the process is what it's all about. So now to get rid of that last line, we're gonna go with our clipper closed and then we'll open it gradually as needed. So I'm going in closed and I'm just slightly tapping that line 
And as I move up into the, the top of the fade, I'm gonna go ahead and open my lever gradually as needed. And these clippers aren't fully zero gapped, so it won't get that line out perfectly, but you'll see me come back with my trimmer to go ahead and lighten up the line that it couldn't get out. But here, I'm just going in closed and opening it gradually, playing with the lever, you know, just kind of trial and error, seeing what works and what doesn't. So right here, I'm just going in closed and then opening it as we move up. And you can see it starts to look more and more like a blend. And you can see that line that I was talking about that the trimmer couldn't get out. But we're going to go ahead and grab the trimmer here in a few seconds to go ahead and get rid of that. And right here I'm using the corner of my blade just to, so I can get into those longer areas. Where we use the one guard and the half guard. All right, so now to get rid of that line that the clipper couldn't get, I'm gonna go with my trimmer and just use the corner of the blade to kind of tap at that line and get it blended out. And now we went ahead again with our clipper closed and we're just gonna go ahead and detail some more, right? And you don't wanna grow impatient in the fading process because you wanna get done. You wanna get it looking super blurry. Like, nah, you gotta stay patient. You gotta trust the process and the system that you have in place and then execute on it. So I'm going ahead right now and I'm grabbing my half guard and just detailing those darker areas that I couldn't get out before. And what you're looking for in the detailing process and portion of the haircut is any imperfections, right? Anything that kind of makes your fade not look fluid, fluid and consistent all the way through the head. So I'm looking for dark spots, going in with my half guard, and if the half guard doesn't get it out, we go a little bit lower, with, which would be with our blade, our, our clipper blade. So right here, this is the half guard closed. Brushing the hair as we do it. And like I said, the half guard wasn't doing the job. So again, we're going in with our clipper closed and opening it gradually, right? And I don't know about you, but from this angle, this fade is starting to look real blurry. And that's what happens when you take pride in what you do and you put a lot of attention to detail. So now to go ahead and soften up this blend and get it blended into the top a little bit better, we're gonna go ahead with our thinning shears. And again, we're, we're just going in with the comb and flaring out slightly and just trying to get it look, look, make the blend look a lot more fluid, you feel me? And that blend is coming out pretty tough, if I say so myself. And now we're gonna go ahead and wet the hair, get it ready to start uh, the trim. And I'm just combing it in its natural direction. I don't wanna make the, the hair, you know, enforce it in a direction it doesn't naturally want to lay because that's how you get that stick up and you don't want that, right? So I'm just trying to soften the blend up a little bit more with my thinning shears before we go ahead and trim the top. All right, so to start the trim on top, we're gonna go ahead and divide the hair into three sections. One on the right side of the head, which is what we're doing right here. Making sure that that part is as, as you know clean as possible. And then we're gonna make one section in the middle and then one side, uh, and one section on the left side of the head. So left, middle, and right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that, that middle uh, section. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim that and follow that section all the way back. And we're gonna go ahead and take off about a half an inch, not too much, you just want a slight trim. And we're gonna follow this guideline all the way to the back of the head. You wanna try not to cut past your knuckle because that's how a lot of times you cut yourself and I still fall victim to it. I cut past my knuckle and I end up cutting my knuckle. And that is very, uh, and a very uncomfortable like cut and it makes you have to stop the haircut go get a band-aid and it's just inconvenient right so don't cut past your knuckle and now after we did that middle guideline we went ahead and combed it over to the right side of his head which is what I'm doing right here and now we're going to use that that middle section as our guideline throughout the entire head 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take horizontal sections and you can see the length difference right here that we cut in the middle. And now we're just gonna go ahead and connect the right side of his head with the middle uh, guideline that we made. And this is the system that I use and I found to work very good for me and allows me to do this in a very timely manner and as well get a nice even cut to where it lays nicely. So I'm going ahead and just uh, following my horizontal sections and connecting it with that middle guideline. And I just told y'all not to cut past the knuckle and look what I'm doing. I'm cutting past the knuckle. So I'm a hypocrite. But don't cut past your knuckle because I've cut myself so many times. And now after we did the right side of the head, I'm going to go ahead and take up a section of that, of that and move it towards the left side of his head. And then we're going to go ahead and look for that length difference. And if we see length difference, we're going to cut it, right? Which is what I'm pointing out right here. But if you don't see any lift, uh, difference in the length, don't cut it, right? Because you don't wanna make, uh, make uh, the hair on top uneven, right? You just wanna make sure that it's even and it'll lay nicely. And we're gonna follow that all the way to the front of his head. Going ahead and pulling up that horizontal section. And then you can see that middle guard line and we're just gonna connect it. And now to make sure that the fringe is nice and even, we're just gonna go ahead and pull that up. And if we see length difference, we're gonna go ahead and just even it out. And sorry for the autofocus on my camera, it's focusing on my face, then on his head, then on his face, then on his head. And this right here is a new service that I added to my arsenal. So when I moved to my studio, I went ahead and added a shampoo with every haircut. So I went ahead and raised my prices. But uh, I usually do this beforehand, right? I usually shampoo the hair first, just so I know that the client has a clean, clean canvas to work with. But here I'm doing it after, cause he came in with already clean head. And I just wanna make sure that he's leaving with no hair on him. So I went ahead and just, uh, you know, put some shampoo in there, massage it out, and I'm just washing his hair for him. It's a nice relaxing, relaxing experience that you can kind of upcharge for. And it just takes that experience of your service to the next level. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and dry it in its natural direction. We're not really gonna style his hair in this video because he wanted to keep it pretty natural looking. And now I put some clips to go ahead and get, uh, you know, that, that longer hair pinned up. And I'm gonna go ahead and line up the front because that's what the client prefers. He likes to line up the front. And I'm trying to get it crispy, but as natural as possible, right? And right here, you're gonna see me do trimmer over comb because I see some dark areas uh, that I didn't get the first time, right? Because the lineup kind of acts like, like a framework to the haircut and it allows you to see imperfections that you couldn't see before. And then I went with the arch. I started at the top of the arch and then I went to the bottom of the arch and connected it in the middle. And that's how you get that nice round C shape. And then we're gonna move to the right side of his head and line that up as well. And you can see that putting the line on that thing really separates it and takes it to a whole nother level. And now we're gonna take it to a whole nother level and just add some light enhancement uh, to his box area just so we can get it looking, you know, super Instagram quality. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit him with the razor. But my man came in, needed a cut, so we went ahead and got him together with a nice mid fade that dropped towards the back. We trimmed the, the hair on top. But family, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button if this helps you in any way, shape, or form. Go ahead and follow me at Drake Clipper Hands. I'm trying to hit 10K on Instagram, and I would really appreciate it. But YouTube, let me know what you guys think about this cut down in the comments section. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And yup, catch y'all next time.